Hey adventurers! Today I invite you to join me on an exciting road trip to Parma. Along our way we will make some thrilling stops at the balsamic vinegar producer, a Parmigiano Reggiano cheesemaker and the charming town of Reggio Emilia. Don't forget to grab some snacks and let's enjoy this episode together. Buongiorno, this is where we woke up. Unfortunately, the hotel had a fancy name, but didn't have a properly working air conditioning. So it felt like we spent all night in sauna. Lucky for us, there was a nice pastry bar just around the corner from our hotel. It's called Bistro La Golosa. It translates to the greedy in Italian. It was quite empty at the beginning, it's just because Italians like to have their breakfast a little bit later in the morning. The pastries looked amazing, and I felt that greed to try them all. We didn't hesitate to try a couple sandwiches either. When the waiter delivered our food, we right away felt like the day is about to get better. Just look at this chocolate tart, or at this apérol spritz. Just imagine, I had this pistachio sandwich cookie with cappuccino first thing in the morning. The sandwich with mushroom and ham and focaccia with salami tasted incredible too. Focaccia. Therefore, I highly recommend this place if you ever in the area. Hey, I think it's a perfect time to ask you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. Thank you. Let's go back to video. After sipping those cappuccinos like our life depends on it, we were ready again to hit the road. Our final destination for today is Parma, but we had to make couple stops on our way. And the first one was quite interesting. We visited Accetaia Giusti. It is the oldest balsamic producer in the world. Imagine, it was found in 1605. Over here you can take a tour and learn that even today traditional balsamic vinegar is made using high quality grape must, natural fermentation and the patient aging in wooden barrels. Which we had a chance to smell, but don't inhale too deep, flavor is too intense. This place is led by the 17th generation of Juicy family, so they had a lot of time to perfect their craft. And what's more important, they happily share their experience. In the store you can find anything, from budget-friendly Young Balsamic, which will cost you up to 50 euros, to Affinato, the balsamic that is aged for at least 12 years, or even Extra Vecchio, aged for more than 25 years, which is more like a collectible, not just a salad dressing. Our next stop was Parmigiano Reggiano Cheese Factory. And what we've seen there was truly shocking. Hold on, let me show you. Okay, if you want to come, it's beautiful. <laughs> wow. Right there, my jaw dropped right on the floor. To give you an idea, they have 10,000s of cheese wheels stored in this fridge. And they have three fridges like that in this factory. This amount of Parmigiano made my head spinning right away. Moreover, they have a store attached to the factory. So we couldn't avoid to buy some cheese for ourselves. We got a 9 years and 7 years old Parmigiano. And when I tried it, I understood that it's the first time in my life I'm trying the real Parmigiano. Sorry for interrupting the video, but I want you to click that subscribe button. Thank you. After that, we arrived at Reggio Emilia, also known as Reggio. And it was a perfect time for our midday espresso. We were not the only ones who thought that way. The patio was packed. I liked how they serve espresso, with a little cup of water on the side to cleanse your palate. Oh my god, I can't forget that flavor to this day. Reggio Emilia is a very important city for Italian culture, because it's a birthplace of Italian flag. 
At this very place, on January 7, 1797, inside the town hall, the tricolor flag was created. The green, white and red symbolized loans, snow and bottled blood. Like any other Italian city, Reggio Emilia is full of stunning views and mesmerizing architecture. That's why we took our time to explore the city. Suddenly our stomachs rebelled, especially Andrews, his tummy had a full-on protest. We needed fuel before our drive to Parma, so where did we go? Il Mercado. I was surprised that almost all of the food that was sold there was Western. We found the most Italian looking place and ordered our food. To be honest, this is a place where I learned that it doesn't matter what they cook, but if they use Italian produce, it will taste. Delicioso. If you don't mind, could you hit that like button? It costs you nothing, but makes me smile. Thank you. We arrived to Parma when the sun dipped down below the horizon. I didn't see this city during daytime, but at night it is beautiful and mysterious. At the beginning the city seemed empty. It's simply because of people do not visit historical landmarks at this time, so you can get the best view. But everything changed as we got closer to the downtown area. Look at all these people having fun on these patios, so we decided to have some fun for ourselves. That's why we got a table at Trattoria del Tribunale, named after Municipal Court of Parma. This culinary gem truly celebrates the local flavors. We started with a small cheese platter served with apricot jam. Add to this a bottle of Vapolicella Ripasso. Sounds great, right? Andrew ordered for himself guanciale, the pork cheeks which were soft as a hug from Nona. Katerina ordered lasagna, which had an irresistible flavor. As for myself, I had a tagliolini al culatello. It is a legendary pasta, similar to carbonara, but it doesn't have any eggs, and it's cooked with culatello di zibello, a prized dry cured ham. As a matter of fact, it's prestigious and one of the finest Italian hams. The pasta was so good that I couldn't even keep it to myself. Definitely try it, if you ever have a chance. Oh my god, what an adventure! Push that subscribe button as hard as you can to stay tuned. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao!